Hey everybody, it's Guillermo Monti here. If you're watching this video, make sure to give it the thumbs up. I have an awesome case study for you to check out. I'm getting ready to call my good friend, Mr. J. Need you guys to be excited. Make sure to hit the thumbs up on this video. You're gonna watch it right now. So make sure to take some notes. You're gonna learn a lot. I'll speak to you in a bit. Hey guys, this is uh, Guillermo Mata here. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like I mentioned to you, I have Mr. J. Mr. J is here. I have a full screen here. You can see him on your side. Um, this guy, he's, he's an awesome individual. I'm sure you're gonna get a lot of great value out of this uh, case study. You're gonna learn a lot. So make sure the first thing that I need you to do, take out those notepads, take some notes, because just like me, still to this day, I remain a student. I'm always learning, always educating myself. So um, I want the same for you guys as well. So uh, with that being said, Mr. J, how you doing, brother? Hello. How are you guys doing? Good to have you here, my man. So Mr. J, can you, can you, can you tell people, not too much, but can you tell people um, a little bit about who you are and you know just your your journey in the beginning you know tell tell people a little bit about that how you who you are so basically my name is jonathan uh, moshiveri um before i started online as I, I was actually a corporate guy for over i don't know 14 years um i, I was a software test consultant for telecommunication companies now I, that job you know when I first started, it was a great job because the company took me everywhere. I was traveling all around the world, but it was hiding something. I didn't enjoy the actual technical aspect of my job. And there was something inside of me that really wanted to change, but it took me that long to, to wanting to make that change. Because you know, if you're in a corporate world, the corporate life, I don't know, the, the mentality is a bit different, you know? And so I did yeah. that for many years and, um, a couple of about four years ago, I thought I need to make some changes while I was working. So um, as a test consultant, I started to go to marketing events, you know, um, internet marketing event that I saw on, online. You know, I started in London because that's where I'm based right now. But um, a lot of the marketing events were actually um, in the US. So during my holidays and during my nine to five job, I used to take time off and actually go to these events. and. Um, this is what got me into, you know, digital marketing, internet marketing, if you want to call it that. But um, for many years, yeah, I was a nine to five guy. And uh, even when I started the marketing, I was doing, you know, when I met Matt, you know, Guillermo, I was actually a nine to five guy as well, as you remember. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I know, man. You come such a far, you know, you come far and, um, you know, you're just, the, the reason why I wanted to bring you on here too is because, yeah, you know, there's some people within my community who you can still see me on your side, right? You can still see I can me. I see you very clearly. Yeah. All right, it's nice. So, um, just like in my community, um, I have a lot of people who are still doing the nine to five. You know, this is like a part time deal, and they're looking to essentially they want to do this full time. They don't really know how to do it. Um, what's your advice? Like, what's your what? I guess. The, the question is, is really like, what was your thought process as far as like, because you were working a nine, uh, nine to five, that was your thing. What you think triggered you to basically say, all right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go full out. What was your like mental state? What is it that really triggered you to want to do that? Do you know what? It didn't happen overnight. You know, um, when I used to go to these events, a lot of these guys were already doing this full time and I was just as a nine to five person I was actually quite fascinated by it because I kind of on you know they didn't have that sort of they didn't have to go back to work like a nine to five job like I had to and I just found that to be completely awesome but I couldn't do obviously do what they did because they'd already been established and they've been doing it for a while you know so I was just coming into these events, trying to learn, trying to find out, okay, what, you know, how did these guys get to where they got to? Yeah. By going to these events though, I started to learn quite a lot, you know, about how these guys uh, created their products and, and how these guys, you know, made the type of sales. But again, it didn't happen 
overnight. Or when I come when it, every time I went to an event and I came back, I was buzzing like you do. You're like, wow, I just went to a holiday. I've got all these ideas in my head, and like after work, I'd be writing down so many things. Every, I'm mean, literally, I come back from work tired. First hour, I eat, but I was so excited. I'd be up from seven, and I'm not lying to you, from seven o'clock to like one o'clock you know, in the morning before going to sleep to go back to work again. And that's wow. how it was, for nice. because I was just excited. I thought, I'm going to be like these guys. I mean, literally, yes. as you know, Guillermo, some of these guys, they were making millions of dollars after a, a two-week launch. That was yeah. real for these guys. And, you know, I used to go for, for dinner and drink with these guys and, you know, and so, the first time in my life I'm hanging around with people with creative ideas and stuff like that so I had this my mindset was like man I need to be in this type of situation compared yeah. to 9 to 5 cubicle work where I go back and I'm given this wad of papers to look at and technical work to do the comparison was just there but obviously um, I then created my first product after like 4 months of going to my first event, you know, like that's really, I mean, and it was literally a PDF. <laughs> so it was a very slow process of trying to create a product, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's awesome. that's, basically, that's, yeah, I can hear you. That's awesome, man. I think that that's that's great. You know, the fact that you you made up your mind and you were essentially, you know, it was something that you said, you know, you had to do this. And I, 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 you know, one of the things that I think was brilliant that, that you did was you started going to events and a lot of my community, a lot of them are consultants, they're, they're trying to get into the local marketing space and things like that. And events are really, it don't matter what event it is, you man, and I, I think even marketing events, absolutely, you know, you have to, you got to stay involved. And that's what I'm saying here. You got to stay involved and continue to um, keep yourself acquainted with other people um, that are achieving, trying to achieve as much as you, um, who are in it, you know, on the grind 24 seven. And I, 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 that's awesome, man. And I, 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 you know, that's, that's, that's great stuff, man. That's just beautiful. So let's talk a little bit about um, some of the mistakes that you made early, right? We all made mistakes. I made mistakes early. Like I spoke about this in my last case study for me, uh, one of the biggest mistakes was like not planning. Like I was basically just doing stuff and I just, I didn't plan well. Like I was just doing it just to do it and smacked around left and right. It was just terrible. So what were some of your biggest mistakes that you made early in, in, in your business after you, you know, cause we, you know, you, you come really far, but if you could rewind time, what were some of your biggest mistakes? If you could go back, what would you fix? and and how? Um, the mistakes, the first mistake I made was I was excited for the product that I had in my own mind. I was like, I was convinced in my mind that the first product I'm going to make out there will do so well, you know, because I was just buzzing. There was, I didn't test anything out. I just brought out an idea. I had a PDF. I wrote the sales page. And, you know, I, you know, I, I looked at other people's sales pages and I thought, like, let me write my own sales page. And it was a warrior, um, warrior forum by at that time anyway. Yeah. And the first mistake I made was just putting a product out without testing it, without speaking to other people about it. And, you know, just you going all out and thinking it was going to make me like hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hanging around. There's so much buzz when you go to these events, when you're hanging around the people you think that you have that kind of mindset. Like you said, there was no planning for me. I was just like, right, I'm gonna do this first. I'm gonna you know, create a sales page and then I'm just gonna, you know, I didn't even give it that leeway. I didn't give it like two months, three months to speak to a lot of uh, affiliates. My mistake was going into Warrior Plus thinking there's thousands of people there anyway and I was gonna get uh, loads of leads, loads of sales just by doing that, just that. But uh, so that was my, that was my first mistake really. Uh, nice, nice, nice. And I could relate that a lot to like, you know, some of the people, some of the local consultants and, you know, local marketers and marketers in my community where sometimes they're just, 
they're just throwing up sales pages for chiropractors. They're just throwing up sales pages for plumbers. And some of the times, you know, there, there are times when um, I've seen this personally, some guys are just putting, you know, they're putting websites together and they're just offering everything. They do everything, reputation, they do SEO, they do ads, they do everything. And, you know, sometimes, you know, sticking to, to one thing and planning out that one thing and doing it the right way that's usually how you win. Like you can't win by doing everything. You got to just stick to one, right? Right? Yeah. You agree? Right. Exactly. So, um, let's, let's talk a little bit about um, landing clients because I know uh, when I reached out to you, you said you were doing some coaching now, you were doing that kind of deal. So um, what what advice would you give? Because even though it's, it's, it's you know, you're doing your coaching, we can relate it a lot, that process, we can relate it a lot to um, how we get clients in the local marketing world, right? Like it's this, it's almost, the, the process is almost the same. So what what advice would you give for anyone looking to land clients? Like someone who, cause I got a lot of people who are looking to get clients like right now. What's you, one thing, what's that one thing that you think will get people clients? Like right now, any advice, anything? Well, in terms of, you know, to get clients, I have to be very clear about what I'm going to deliver to the client. You know, if I'm going to charge a certain amount of money, 5K, 2K, 3K, I need to be clear about exactly what I'm going to deliver so that when I'm speaking to that prospect, you know, I'm confident that, listen, when you work with me, I'm going to be delivering these these things to you. And uh that's happened for me you know that confidence came after many years of many mistakes that i've made as well you know and i can actually say that with confidence now because i know exactly what i'm going to deliver and then i get their agreements and it's just about trying to say to them well i'm coming i'm coming to you with this confidence i'm going to deliver this to you because i have a plan not just this is where we're going to reach this is the process we're going to take to reach there you know so when it comes to getting new prospects and landing a client, you've got to be, you know, you've got to know exactly what you're going to deliver to your client, so that at the end of that, at the at the end of it, they should be satisfied. They should turn around and say, "What? Yep, he said he's going to deliver this to me. We went through that process, and he delivered it." You know. Okay. Now, in terms of my clients, um, over time I've built up a list, so I normally, you know, coach my um, people on my list. But I also teach my my um, students because now for the last two years I've really gone into LinkedIn in a big way, and a lot of um, pro my prospects come from LinkedIn because they have the budgets, they have the money to spend. A lot of uh, people on LinkedIn, they're professionals, they have yearly budgets, quarterly budgets, monthly budgets given to them by the company, and I provide a service. And so that's where I get a lot of my clients from as well. And when I message, I know I've got a software on LinkedIn. I did a launch on LinkedIn, so I have an online program. So that gives me the confidence when I go and, and um, when I go and approach prospects on there. So that's that would be my advice. Really to know exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's interesting that you you've landed clients on LinkedIn because uh, when I first started out, that was one of the first places that I went to. I was on LinkedIn hard, man. Like, and I think, and like you said, man, still to this day, LinkedIn is like a spot where you can go. I mean, it, there's only one thing happening on LinkedIn, right? It's business, nothing but business. It's, you, it's, it's a different ball game when you compare it to Facebook, because Facebook is all about social you know people are sharing what they ate and what restaurants they're at and linkedin when you go to linkedin people are like talking business business and i noticed business. that too that there's a lot of high-end buyers on linkedin maybe you could agree right like exactly because uh, of the b2b a lot of the guys they've got the budgets they've got the money to spend on your services but you have obviously you need to know how to approach them and you need to, need to know how to market to them when you compare say linkedin and the other social media like facebook instagram the behavior the way you have to behave on linkedin is different you can't have cat pictures and all these types of things that you have on facebook or linkedin you have to be more professionally and you know what since microsoft took over linkedin 26 billion dollars they spent a lot of people don't realize that there's a lot of changes, real improvements happening on LinkedIn at the moment. 
and a lot of your clients are actually waiting for you on there. You just need to know how to put yourself, um, set yourself up correctly on your profile and know how to use those different features. So LinkedIn is a very powerful absolutely i'm with you man awesome i appreciate uh the, the the advice and everything let's move on so can you tell tell people because this is you know like i was saying in the beginning you know uh, jonathan you know, and our we we have a, a history together um i actually served as one of his you know because like i said before you know jonathan was already talented he was already technical not that technologically advanced if that's even a word right like he's already advanced he already had the skills i was able to come in and assist him in some areas where he needed improvement and that had a lot of that had to do with you know creating some creating a product um you know putting it out on the web and making sure that it made sales so i was able to assist him with that um, we did, uh, Jonathan, you said we did about 450 sales. That's probably at around 10K, 9K or so. Um, we did that in about seven days. Can you, can you, cause I, I need people to understand that process, right? Like give people a little bit of some insight. I know you said I was a bit of a drill sergeant and I'll accept that. I'll accept that, I'll accept that with open arms. But can you, can you share that with people? Can you share with people that, that experience? Yeah, I mean, um... We, we talked about the mistakes I was making at, at first. And obviously when I was working with Guillermo, before I was working with Guillermo, I had my sales page, I had my JV page, I had my own plans, I had my own mindset in terms of how I wanted to launch this product. And obviously I had a conversation with Guillermo, I said, well, you seem to you know, you know a few things about the launch game, you've been in it longer than I have. And so we worked together and I remember Again, I'm, come up, I'm from a corporate guy, I had that corporate hat on. I had to do, remember I had to do a, a video for the JV page. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. know, looked up my, the video, the first video I did and said completely, you're not using that for the JV page. And you know, I wasn't a video guy. I was very afraid to come on video, you know, again, in the corporate guy, yeah. I was I'm the IT guy in the back of the room. It was Guillermo that really, sorted out my script what i had to say how i had to you know be on camera it was Guillermo that actually gave me the confidence and don't get me wrong he drilled me hard we had to go through it many times to get it right and that's the thing about Guillermo. he wants you to get it right before you know we can put it out there and we, you know, we went through those drills it's like one of those um actors yeah. who have to go through so many different things so that's what we did we went through the jv page he re-scripted my JV page for me so that, you know, it would be attractive to uh, the affiliates who are going to help me uh, launch this product. And so these are the little things like on the sales page, the headlines that we had to test. I don't know if you remember that. We had to redo a couple of the shift a lot of the images around and, you know, yeah. we had to go through that again. So that was the experience I had with, uh, and, and I have to say, you know, a lot of things I had to do again, if you don't need to remember Gamer, I had to do a lot of things again, which was annoying for me because yeah. I had already put a lot of effort into what I thought was correct, you know? And, uh, you know, we did the launch. We did the launch. I was nervous. You know, when you're doing the launch, you're nervous. You yeah. know, the, first, the first day, you know, I got over like 250 sales. I remember that because, you know, you got... And let me just take it back a bit. I still remember... I had to join a lot of Facebook groups, if you remember, I had to join yeah. Facebook and you introduced me to a lot of, you know, um, the local guys at that time who were launching as well, you know, introducing me to a lot of those guys who mailed for me. And that was incredible, wasn't it? Because yeah. they looked at the sales page and said, yeah, I'll, I'll mail for this. They were really, you know, impressed with the sales page and the product. And that got us some sales as well. So in the first two days, we were getting a lot of sales. Okay, it slowed down on the third day, and then around the closing, it kind of picked up again. And yeah. so, um, for me, that was incredible. From a you know, look, uh, a permanent nine to five guy, we earn a fixed amount of money every month, you know. And even as a contractor, you kind of know how much you're gonna. Once you're a contractor, you know you're gonna know. So when a nine to five guy sees this type of money like surge through. It's very exciting, I have to say, especially after the work we put in, you know. And, you know, after the seventh day, 
we got about 400 cells and the 50 cells came in trickled in isn't it because even after this even after the launch you're still going to get a lot of people opened up their emails still buying the products you know so yeah. over that seven days we get you know 450 cells and then warrior plus at that time you know i was very excited and that's the revenue i made um get, even after i gave out prize money and stuff like that i made a tidy made a tidy profit and it was a real learning experience for me because not only did i make the 10k revenue it was the leads the buyer leads i remember you kept telling me now you've got some buyer leads you know <laughs> subsequently yeah, yeah, yeah. month or two after that i'm still making sales through affiliate sales that was exciting and you know don't get me wrong this was never gonna you know pay my mortgage or anything like that but it was very exciting indeed to, to go through this experience and you know uh, make this type of money yeah. and uh, and you know subsequently a few months after that i was doing a lot of affiliate sales you still made a lot of money from the existing leads as well so it was a you know it was uh painful but you know in the end i learned so much i guess from that launch as well i learned so much in terms of trying you know because i remember also we had to move the dates a lot remember we had to we were yeah, yeah i remember that date but we were like no can't launch on that day we have to move the date you know so all this yeah. was a real experience and it was your experience it was you that actually you know gave me a plan you know, to you know to get going so that was good that was good, good yeah experience. man and i appreciate that and i you know you got me blushing over here, man. You got me blushing over here. <laughs> You've not but, really had this uh, blushing to be honest, but looking yeah, back yeah. now, you think yeah. that's actually what happened. I mean, it wasn't plain sailing. Yeah, was exactly. Right. You know, we actually did this. And like I said, Jonathan, you know, and, and this is why, you know, you know, I have some students, believe me, I had students that I work with and some just quit. They, they don't have it in them. There's just some people in life that have it. And there's some people that don't have it. You had it. And that's why I wanted to work with you. I believed in you. I believed in what you had. I believed in your potential. So I was just like, I want to work with this guy. Like if I could show him, he's going to do big things. And that's exactly what you, you did. You started doing a lot of major things and you were crushing it. You had sales. And you know, one thing that I wanted to point out, you actually listened to what I said, you know, about the leads and, you know, making sure that, you know, you know, now you have buyers now, now you have buyer leads, people that will keep buying from you. And, you know, I can relate this a lot to the local marketing world where a lot of the times, you know, we're not paying attention to the leads. You know what I mean? Like some people get leads and they don't bother to follow up. They don't do any follow up. They don't do any nothing no direct mail nothing it's just nothing happening at all but um yeah man i mean it's sad but you know hopefully you know just based off what jonathan said guys you got some real value out of it man you when you have something you believe in it you stick to it you build it up and then you, you put it out on the market it'll work out but remember stick to one thing stick to one thing so um Let's move on here. I know you said you had a book. No, not a book, a magazine. You had a yeah. magazine. And can you can you take us on that process of, of building a, a digital magazine? I, like I said before, I have a lot of local marketers in, in my community. Um, and when I heard the digital magazine, I'm like, man, how can we take that and like use that locally? You know what I'm saying? So how to take us through that process like how do you actually do that like so, um, the reason the magazine came along was really how do i the idea was how do i go and contact these big affiliates how do i get their attention if i wanted them to kind of mail for me you know and the idea of a magazine just came along with me. i thought i'm going to create a magazine digital magazine that will allow me to approach a top affiliate or a top vendor to say, hey, I'd like to feature you. I'd like to interview you and feature you in my magazine. And what this magic magazine is going to do for you is going to expose you to your products and your services to a lot of my readers. So in many ways, I'm going to these guys and I'm giving something to them. I'm not just going with a, you know, beggar's carbon, you know, hat in you know, hand. 
I'm saying, hey, I'm going to expose you to a massive audience. People love your software, but I'm going to get my magazine to a lot more hands. So with this approach, a lot of them actually agreed to come onto my interview. So I got a lot of the top guys on the different platforms to appear on my magazine. And that's how the conversation started with a few of those guys. And that's how I built up a relationship with a few of those guys as well. And I'm sure it can be applied locally as well if you want to do interview. Interview is one of the best ways to build that relationship because you're actually giving something to someone else. You know, you're actually, um, I got to basically send this one magazine to thousands of other affiliates and vendors. And so, you know, they get kudos that way. That's how the whole magazine came along. Um, actually, now I'm trying to change it. It used to be called Launch Gigs. I'm trying to change it to uh, Digital Launch Insider. I wanna, you know, I'm, I'm nice. going to take it further. And it's going to be actually downloaded on Apple and uh, Google Plus as well. So uh, I'm, I still use it for that reason. I use it to go and contact people, to talk, contact influencers. Um, um, that in Going forward, that's what I'm going to be doing as well absolutely man that's awesome that's powerful you know we could definitely use that same exact strategy in the local marketing world where you said you you know you did this to build relationship with affiliates and that's brilliant you know this is a great if you take this same exact concept and you you know you you interview other local businesses in your neighborhood in your area you could do the same exact thing you could form a magazine so imagine having a digital magazine where you could essentially, you know, it just, just, you, you go out there, you interview a bunch of people, you got a bunch of people in the magazine, and then you hand it out to a bunch of different businesses who are looking to learn about other businesses in the local area. I mean, that's a no-brainer. It's a great way for you as, um, as local marketers to, you know, build that relationship, build that relationship with uh, other businesses in the area. And it's less like, you know, because as marketers, we already have a bad reputation in the local marketing world, right? Marketing world, period. You know, they, when people hear a marketer, they're like, oh, all right, what is this guy going to sell me now? You know what I mean? So by taking that approach with the digital magazine, um, you could actually um, take the back route, essentially. Now you're interviewing them. It's not about pitching, but you have you now have them in a magazine. So Jonathan, where do you go? Where do you go to create these magazines? Like, how do you actually put that thing together? Like, I know it's a lot of pages, but how do you put that together? So basically, there are different um, platforms where you can actually uh, create magazines. I use um, a platform called Magcast to create my magazines, but you can hire people from from India, Philippines to create the PDF. And then you can then upload your magazine on this Magcast, Magcast platform. So that's what I use uh, for that because uh, once you create the, the PDF, there's so many great designers out there. You just, once I get the interviews, I transcribe those interviews with someone on Fiverr or something. They do a good job. And then I, I hand that transcription to a designer to come up with something that looks good, that um, they'll make the affiliates or vendors look good in the cover pages and the inside pages. And so then once you've got that, you can then upload that into the Magcast platform and the Magcast platform can then upload that into Apple or Google. And so people can, you know, you can do things like that as well. So you can do it on, you can do it on the app or you can just do it on the PDF. That's also very good. That's right. gotcha. So if you guys are looking for that link, uh, just make sure to drop it down on the comments. Uh, ask me down on the comments and I'll share this link with you. I'll ask Jonathan for the link. This way you guys can go and, and, and take full advantage of that. But man, your growth has been tremendous, man. Like, you know, thinking about when we were first working together, nine to five guy, now you're crushing it. You have customers now. Now you're building something that's legit. You have this magazine. Is there any any last words of advice that you would give to people who are still in a bit of a pit? You know, because you've been there. I've been there before. I know what that's like. I know what the dark side is like. I've, I've been there before. So can you share that with people? Can you share with people um, just your last words of advice? Yeah, my advice is if you've got a nine to five job, continue in your nine to five job. I was doing what I'm talking about now in the evenings, because obviously for a lot of people, they've got mortgages, they've got children and stuff like that. So obviously you can't walk away from that straight away. But 
this business allows you to come home in the evenings and weekends and work on what you love to do. You've got to absolutely love it as well. You know, you've got to love helping other people, love the creation process, love the marketing process. Stick to your work, make enough money, you know, doing it in the evenings. Once that money takes over, then you decide to leave. I know a lot of um, the top guys are saying, no, you've got to leave your job and, you know, you've got to just go for it. But listen, yeah. when you've got a mortgage to pay, when you've got children and you've got real responsibilities, I understand that that's really difficult. That's That was my approach and I have I took a realistic approach. I made sure I not, you know, made enough money. I actually, up until last year, I was still doing contract work. Like I'd work for like four months and then come off, do the marketing stuff and then jump back on again. So that, there's that option as well. A lot of freelance work and then jump back onto the, the marketing. So um, just stick to it, stick to it. You know, there's so many um, good nuggets out there. You know, you just, if you stick to it, you start to realize you can start building your list. You can start getting the right type of clients and you'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy it. Just, you know, my, my advice is stick to it, stick to a plan and just keep it going. Absolutely, man. That's valuable words, valuable words. And, you know, I want to add to that by just saying that, um, you know, just just keep doing it, you know, just keep doing it. Um, and I, I always talk about this quote because I love it. But Mike Tyson said that there are people in the world that, you know, when he will go in the gym, right, he will go in the gym and he would train. He said everybody would be training in the gym, but not everyone would be training to be the champ. And 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 that really that that's a quote that stood with me to this day. This is Mike Tyson. So, um, you know, sometimes in life and sometimes in business, you, you just you got to take that leap, man. You got to take that leap of faith. And that's what Jonathan did. He played the game right. He watched it, and you know, and he he made the right move at the right time. And that's this that's the same exact thing that you guys should be doing. Watch your steps. Watch how you're making your moves. Make the move when you need to. But just make sure that you plan it out right, because I know throughout this whole um, case study, you, you've been you've been hearing how we've been planning things out, how we've been, you know, just you know taking our time throughout this process, and and look at where this guy is at now. You know, he's killing it now. He has customers. He's just blowing up. So, with that being said, um, if you um, if you like a thirty minute session. Um, I'm doing 30 minute sessions with some of our selected uh, members. There's a form down below for you to check out the link, check out the link, fill it out. I don't just work with anyone and I don't just give 30 minutes to anyone. So based on, you know, whatever I see filled out, if you fit the part, I'll give you a call personally and we'll have a chance to, to speak and I'll overlook your business with 30 minutes. I have something to offer. So if you're not prepared, you're not prepared to play, you're not prepared to play on a different level, do not fill out that form below because you'll be wasting your time, you'll be wasting my time. So I left the link down below for those of you who are serious, and you're serious about scaling up, left that link down below, fill it out. Jonathan, I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate your time. I can't wait to see you grow, man. I'm just gonna, you know, I, was, I know I was supposed to go to London, but you know, we'll make it happen somewhere, shape and form where I go to London. And I'm sure we're gonna, you know, are you gonna be speaking in London too? No, I won't be speaking. No, I'm just, I'm just looking forward oh. to going and meeting the other guys and, you know, having a good time. Absolutely, absolutely. I'll come to London, so I'll, you know, I had to be there. I had to see some of these guys. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'll definitely, I'll make it up there in some shape or form. Um, it doesn't just have to be this event. Who knows? We'll make it happen. But either or, you know, I appreciate your time, my man. I appreciate you. Oh, thanks. That was good. Thanks and, for having um, that's, that's pretty much it. So. so hopefully you got a lot of value out of that case study. Oh, man, like he dropped a lot of good bombs and I'm sure you got them as well. Um, I have my phone here. I left the link below. I'm setting up 30 minute strat strategic sessions with some of our members. So go ahead, click on the link down below and I'm looking to speak to you in a second. Speak soon.